All right, the new studio. Believe it or not, this is our third try at this first video because, believe it or not, drawing in this space is hard and distracting and Zach's on the other side of a piece of glass. But to get started, I'm going to do a, just a warm-up video about OEE, which is a response to a conversation we had earlier this week. So this video is why you absolutely have to be calculating OEE. It's not optional. Take zero. So to start, we'll start with our automation stack because I think it looks beautiful. And the automation stack applies to the Holy Grail, which we're going to talk about this week. So this is what every business is striving to have. MES in the middle, supervisor control and data acquisition, and PLC HMI. Okay? Anyone who watches our videos should be familiar with the automation stack. We use a five-layer automation stack. The traditional uh, stack is a six-layer where PLC and HMI are broken out. They've actually merged into one another. So whether the state, state of your business is wholly industry 3.0 or your state of the business is wholly industry 4.0, the structure of your business is this stack. There's data at every layer and none of it is integrated or unified, okay? The traditional environment, I have my PLCs out on the edge. My PLCs are doing all of my automation to keep my employees safe and to keep my equipment running uniformly and repeatably, okay? The HMI gives us the ability to control the automated environment. The supervisory control and data acquisition layer gives me alarming and real-time monitoring of my entire operation at the plant level in a, from a control room. Manufacturing execution allows me to, to convert a sales order for a bunch of widgets that's in the ERP into manufacturing on the plant floor. That's what this layer is, and this is where OEE lives. Okay? And cloud is where we dump all of our data and our information to retrieve for reporting and to do what's known as post-processing data analytics. That is, what can we learn from the way that our, operation, our business operates? Here's what you almost certainly have. You almost certainly have this and you have, actually, you don't almost certainly. You absolutely have PLC HMI and you absolutely have ERP. You may or may not have SCADA in some way, shape, or form. If you have alarms that you can see centrally, not just on the machine, then you have SCADA in some form. And very few people have MES, a software layer MES, and very few people are using cloud-based analytics, although everyone wants to be using it. Everyone wants the holy grail, which we'll be talking about in a minute. But this video is about whether or not you have an MES system, a software-based MES system. You absolutely have to be calculating OEE, and it's not optional. Okay, OEE, the OEE calculation, overall equipment effectiveness, is a percentage between zero and 100%. There's really two metrics. There's TEEP, okay? TEEP is based on a 24-hour, seven-day schedule. That is, if I was able to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if my machine produces one part per minute, so I can produce one part per minute, that means that I could theoretically produce 1,440 parts in a day. The calculation, the TEEP calculation, without taking into account quality or availability, the TEEP calculation says if I produce 90%, if my TEEP number is 90%, then it means I produced uh, uh, 1,296. If I produce 1,296 in a day, then it means my TEEP number was 90%. I assure you, no one is operating at 90% TEEP. OEE is overall equipment effectiveness, and it takes into account your actual schedule. So you don't operate 24 hours a day and seven days a week. You have safety meetings, you have shift change, you have changeovers from one product to another. So you can't, when you're doing a changeover, you can't be producing one part per minute. When you're in a safety meeting, you can't be producing one part per minute. What OEE does is it takes into account your actual schedule. It also takes into account changing rates. Your TEEP number, is always based on the theoretical rate of a machine, okay? And, and I'm going to get into why this stuff actually matters here in a second. For the closed loop holy grail, that is, I want to use machine learning and AI to make optimal decisions for my business and tell me what to execute on the plant floor, what order to run next, whether or not to stop this order, when to schedule my, my shutdown, which is ultimately what your goal is. You want machine learning and artificial intelligence to make those decisions for you. That's what you want. One of the things that the machine learning and AI algorithms have to have is OEE. They have to know how efficient are you operating, okay? They also want to know this TEEP number. That's an easy one to calculate. It's basically actual versus theoretical in a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week schedule. So OEE is, takes into account your actual schedule. 
And it also takes into account your changing rates. It doesn't use theoretical rate. I can create a standard rate for how fast I'm supposed to produce a certain product on a line. And that rate is a function of lots of variables. We know that the tank heater doesn't operate that well at this temperature, and therefore I need to run the line slower so the heater can keep up, those types of things. OEE takes into account this. So what is OEE? OEE is AQP, Availability, Quality, and Performance. Okay, these numbers are all on a scale of zero to 100%. Very simple, availability is what percentage of the time that the machine was scheduled was it available to run. So this takes into account downtime, when the machine broke. When the machine was down, this number will tell us what percentage of the time when I was supposed to be running was I down because of some maintenance issue, okay? Quality is very simple. It's the number of good parts divided by the number of total parts. How much waste did I produce, okay? And performance is what did I produce relative to what I was supposed to produce. Performance only takes into account production when the machine was available. So the first thing that we have to do with OEE is we have to know how much did the machine go down. Well, here's the thing. It's not as simple as it looks. Availability has two points. The first thing you do is you track all downtime, number one. The next thing you do is you say, was it planned or unplanned, okay? If it was planned downtime, if it's planned downtime, you subtract that number, let's say 10 minutes, you subtract from the scheduled time, how much I was supposed to be running. So if I was originally scheduled to run eight hours in a shift and I have a 15 minute planned safety meeting, that's still a planned downtime event. I need to subtract those 15 minutes from the eight hour shift to get seven hours and 45 minutes of available time to run so I can use that baseline to do all of my other calculations, okay? If it's an unplanned event, it gets stored as an unplanned event and it's used to calculate availability, okay? So if it's an unplanned event, we have to store it so that we can use it to calculate availability. Now, getting that number is not always easy. Knowing whether it's planned or unplanned is not always easy. So that's the availability part. Quality is always the easiest one to calculate. What percentage of the parts that I produced were good parts? Performance is another really hard one. So performance, takes into account a scheduled time, so how much time I was scheduled for that shift. But remember, that number is always moving based on planned downtime events. So as I accrue downtime, planned downtime events during the shift, it gets subtracted from the scheduled time. But it's scheduled time times standard rate, how many am I supposed to produce, equals our target. And, the, to, and to, to calculate performance, we divide actual, that is, what did we actually produce, divided by what our target was. Actual includes good and bad parts. Bad parts are only ever applied to the quality number. Good and bad parts go to the performance number. They both get added in together because it's the total amount you produce. At the end of the day, we end up with three numbers. We end up a percentage of our availability was I was available 100% of the time. I had no downtime. Never happens. Okay? This is always the highest number. We'll say I had 100% quality. Generally, we see quality numbers, 99, whatever. And then our performance number, we'll say was 50%. So that is, I produced 50% of the parts that I was supposed to produce, which means I was really running the machine too slow, or my standard rate is too high. When I multiply all those numbers together, I get an OEE number of 50%. Here's why you need to be calculating OEE. Here's the reason you have to be calculating OEE and why it's not an optional number. Okay, it has to do with the fact that you want machine learning and AI to make decisions for you and send those decisions back to you. And the reason you want to use them is because they can process a lot more variables than a human can, right? One of the key numbers that machine learning and AI needs is OEE. The machine learning and AI algorithm needs to know is how efficient am I operating for two reasons. Number one, it can make a recommendation to tell you whether or not you should change that my standard rate. Your standard rate is not real. It's not an optimal standard rate. It's unrealistic. And there's a lot of people watching this video right now that'll say, yeah, we have standard rates that are unrealistic. We say we should produce X number of widgets per minute, and we know that we can't for a lot of reasons. The raw materials are defective, whatever the deal is. So machine learning and AI can tell you whether or not your standard rate is realistic. It can tell you whether or not you need to 
change your maintenance plan. You need to do shutdowns more frequently. You need to do preventative maintenance more frequently. It'll tell you whether or not you need to change your QIP, your quality inspection plan. Okay, you are not doing enough inspections in line on your line to lower the amount of waste that you're producing. And it can also tell you which of your operators are the highest performers. You have opinions about whether or not they're the highest performers or not, but they tell you which operators are the highest performers, but more importantly, which shifts are your highest performers, which raw material vendors, which machines are your highest performers. So when you know these numbers, this efficiency number, you can use this overall efficiency number to make determinations about whether or not I should invest an additional 10 or $15,000 in my next machine build. Because that one time that we spent an additional 10 or $15,000 building the machine, it yielded 11 or 12% additional OEE, overall equipment effectiveness, which translated into a plus X gain in overall profitability for the company. These are all numbers that you think you're calculating. These are all things you think you have a good grasp on that you don't. And the reason why is because you are not grabbing that information from the edge and seamlessly integrating it up through the stack to be consumed and produced at all layers and then sending that information back down to all layers of the business for decision making. Okay. The reason you have to calculate OEE is because A, you don't know how well you're running until you're calculating OEE, real OEE, this real calculation, number one. And number two, you can't achieve the holy grail without that number. You have to have this number in order to be able to achieve this holy grail, this closed loop integration of your entire business. Okay, And we hear it all the time. And in fact, we had a meeting this week with a potential client. We were talking about the value of capturing OEE in a short time to value as part of a complete digital transformation project for their entire business. Okay, And many times during the conversation, the potential client said that they didn't care about this OEE number, that this isn't what we cared about. We want this. And so this video actually is sort of a response to that meeting. What's crazy is the potential client, they were all really, really smart guys, guys and gals. They were very, very smart. They got it. They understand what it is we've been preaching for the last, I mean, what I've been preaching for the last six or seven years of my career, but what we've been putting in our videos for the last year. They get it. They're not one of the clients who thinks they know everything and that they don't need to optimize their business long term. They know they need to do this, and they know they need to have a vision, and they're taking all the right steps to get there. But they did say they didn't care about this number, and it got me thinking, we have to let the audience know this is not optional. This number is not optional. You may not want this in a pretty dashboard for your whole plant to see, but calculating this in real time, calculating it accurately, and getting it into the hands of the nodes and people who need to consume that number is not an option. And that is the reason that you have to calculate OEE. All right, thanks. All right, so this month we're going to be shooting videos on what is IIoT 2020. We're going to be talking about the manufacturing holy grail, which will be a, a reference to this structure here. I'm actually sketch the whole thing out for you. We're going to shoot why you need OEE, which we just shot. And we're going to do an example of industry 4.0 versus industry 3.0. So an IIoT implementation versus an industry 3.0 implementation. It's two of our clients, two projects that we've done in the last couple of years. And we're going to go ahead and juxtapose the reality of one versus the benefits of the other in the last video that we shoot this month. If you enjoy the content, all the normal stuff, like, subscribe, share. But what I would like for you guys to do, since this is the very first video we've ever shot in the new studio using the electronic whiteboard and the whole deal, the neon markers and me facing the camera the whole time, and which by the way, it takes a lot to get used to. This was definitely weird for me to do it this way. I would like to know what you guys think of the new studio and this new setup. Do you prefer the low tech whiteboard environment or do you like this environment better? Maybe you need to see a few more videos to make the final decision, but I would like to see comments there. A couple other things I'm going to touch on in just like an ad hoc video this month. We're going to talk about some of the comments that we saw this month based on the content last month. I'm going to answer a couple more questions about is OPC UA the future of IIoT, et cetera, et cetera. And then one final video is going to be sort of my commentary on the way that we do business the way that we go to market versus the way other companies go to market, and just some of my observations about the current state of industrial automation and the industrial internet of things, which should help to shed light on some of the challenges that everyone is uh, facing, trying to decide what product to use, what architecture to use, and what partners to choose. So anyway, that's my spiel. I'm sticking to it, and that was one hell of a warm-up. Boom. <laughs>